I'd like to introduce you to our first speaker, Linda Hasenfranz. Liz Linda Hasenfranz is the CEO of Linamar. Based in Guelph, Linamar is an advanced manufacturing company combining leading edge technology with deep manufacturing expertise. And we welcome their ongoing support as the presenting sponsor of this conference. Linda joined Linamar in 1990 and worked her way up from the ground floor, experiencing all aspects of the business, including running a machine, engineering, and operations and management. Linda has earned multiple awards and recognition and is actively involved in many professional organizations. Most recently, she was installed as Western University's 23rd Chancellor. Please join me in welcoming Linda Hasenfratz. Thank you and good morning everybody. It's a real pleasure for me to be here to welcome you to this wonderful conference. I think you guys are really going to enjoy the day. Certainly we've always enjoyed our involvement uh, with uh, sponsorship of, of the day. So as you heard, I'm Lynn Hasfratz, I'm CEO of Linamar. Uh, we are a global diversified advanced manufacturing company. What that means is we're taking all the latest in terms of exciting technology, much of it enabled by artificial intelligence and machine learning that has really come to the forefront over the last five or six years in particular, and coupling it, as you heard, with our deep manufacturing expertise to really solve problems, solve problems for our customers and for their customers, whether it's about carbon efficiency and trying to reduce or eliminate uh, emissions in our vehicle business, uh, or finding ways to bring clean water or power to, uh, to the world. Those are the kind of things that we and other people in the manufacturing world are, uh, are trying to get done. So, uh, as I have a prop. I'm going to put it down for a minute. There we go. Uh, so, uh, a little bit of advice uh, I like to give to young people when I get the opportunity, when I get the opportunity to. So uh, you're obviously thinking a lot about what am I going to study? What am I going to do next uh, in my life? And I like to give three pieces of advice. Number one, obviously pick an area of study that is interesting to you, something that you're naturally curious about and that you enjoy learning about. Number two, do a little research on the kind of jobs that you can do uh, coming out of that area of study and make sure there's you know, some demand for those jobs. Do a little more research to look at the earnings potential of those jobs and just make sure it lines up with the lifestyle you envision. I feel like that's a, a good sort of success story, right? So if you can look at uh, something you love, that there's jobs out there and, and uh, it's, it's got the opportunity that you're looking for. And I feel like science and technology are a great choice for anybody who's obviously naturally curious about the world around them and how it works. There's certainly huge demand for those careers out there in many different industries and great earnings potential as well. So I feel like it really checks all three of those boxes. So I know you're thinking, oh, uh, but are there many women in those areas of study? And I can happily tell you that the answer is yes. And the numbers are increasing every single year. We have 20 times the women in engineering and science than we did 25 years ago, and, and momentum is just continuing to build. You know, I look at the schools around us. The University of Toronto is a great example. They're one of our country's top-ranked universities and with a world-recognized engineering program, and they are sitting at 42% women in their engineering program. So clearly, you know, things are changing, and it's exciting to see that out there. They're not alone. Other schools, University of Waterloo right here in town, Western University, the University of Guelph, are all uh, seeing higher and higher levels of enrollment of women in their STEM programs. Canadian women aged 25 to 34 hold 39% of all STEM degrees, uh, which is almost parity, which is fantastic, right? Remember the goal is 50%, not 100%. You know, people throw these numbers out and they say, you know, 30 or 40%, and you think, oh, that doesn't sound very high. But Really, your goal is 50, not, not 100%. So we're actually doing quite well. Women in STEM jobs earn 35% more than their counterparts in non-STEM careers and 40% more than non-STEM uh, men. For that reason, myself and many others believe we should be doing everything we can 
to try to increase even more the representation of women in STEM. So a great example of that is actually an initiative that we started at Linamar back uh, two years ago called See It, Be It, STEM It. And the, the idea of it was to try to get more young women interested into science, engineering, math, technology, through really an extensive role model celebration concept. So we created a website. We have about 150 women profiled on our website today in all kinds of different areas of STEM. I really encourage you to check it out. It's seeitbeitstemit.com. And then, this is where the prop comes in. We, uh, we have uh, twice so far created these awesome calendars that are showcasing uh, 12 of the women each year to really kind of keep, keep the story going all year long. And it's so great, you know, you read these stories of these women and why they decided they wanted to study STEM and how, how much they're enjoying the careers that they've gone into. And also really interesting to see all the different kind of careers that you can get into out of your STEM background, not just in, in science, but in banking, for instance. Uh, the banks are hiring huge numbers of engineers and physicists to do all the complex algorithms that they're developing uh, in, uh, in that industry. So a lot of places you may not have thought that that's, uh, that's the kind of study to do to get into that career. So we have uh, several of these calendars out front someplace, not sure where. But I've got a stack of them that I brought for you guys, so if you want one, grab one and take it home and talk to some of your uh, friends about it. We printed and distributed 20,000 calendars last year. Uh, and uh, you know I'm, I'm really excited by the great reception that we're seeing. Now, when I started out in the automotive industry, I was often the only woman in the room, or one of only a couple. But of course, that's really changed as well. Thanks in many ways, really, to more women in STEM roles. There's, so many more women in senior roles in the automotive industry and all kinds of other industries where they may not have been represented before, in both the automaker and on the supplier side, including, uh, in fact, the CEO of one of the world's largest automakers, General Motors. So I personally felt like the lack of women at the time in the industry was never an issue for me. And I think that's probably because I just didn't let it be an issue. And that's another little bit of advice uh, that I have for you is to not dial into negative frequencies, let's say. Uh, I feel like if you look for negativity, you're going to find it. So don't look for it. You know, focus on what you're there to do, the job you're there to do. And I found that if I wasn't focused on it, everybody else forgot about it pretty quickly as well because I showed them that I was capable, I was smart, I could get the job done. And after all, that's what we were all there to do anyhow. So I found that to be a really good strategy to just uh, kind of get past any of those kind of things. I remember I joined a, a board a few years back of a, a company, a French auto parts company. And at the time, all the other board members were men. And one of the directors commented, commented to me, oh, you know, this is going to be difficult for you this board full of men, you're the only woman. And I remember thinking, this isn't going to be hard for me. This is the story of my life. This is going to be hard for you. You know, you're the one who's uh, all of a sudden got something new and somebody new to uh, deal with. As an aside, he's no longer on the board, but I still am. <laughs> so you young ladies are, are really lucky because your homes are here in southwestern Ontario, right in the heart of this incredible ecosystem that has developed around technology and exciting areas such as artificial intelligence and machine learning. You know, from institutions like where you're sitting right here, the Perimeter Institute, focused on, you know, fundamental thinking, to a fantastic network of universities, of colleges, incubators, accelerators. You know, you are sitting in the second largest technology cluster in North America, next to Silicon Valley. That's pretty exciting. We also boast the second highest density of technology and science startup companies in the world, right here in this region between Waterloo and Toronto. That's pretty exciting. That means there's a lot of companies that are getting going here, a lot of new ideas, leading edge technology, and they're all looking for graduates in the tech and science fields. In my opinion, there's actually never been a time frame where the Techno technological evolution, thanks to these new technologies, will transform so many industries and so many companies. 
You know, the manufacturing industry is a really great example of that. With the advent of, you know, advanced robotics, collaborative robotics, other advanced technologies, we're rapidly transforming manufacturing into a technology industry, which is true of a lot of other industries out there as well. We have fewer and fewer people on our shop floor actually running equipment and way more doing more interesting, exciting things like programmers, designers, tool developers, robotics technicians, logistics coordinators, and the list just keeps going on. All kinds of really interesting, high-paying jobs. And in addition, we are doing, as I mentioned at the outset, some really important things in terms of solving some of our world's biggest issues, reducing and eliminating emissions to improve our atmosphere, developing technologies around clean water or clean power for our communities. And, you know, the fact is in today's rapidly evolving technology world, the demand for unskilled jobs, I think, is just going to continue to diminish. And I think that is why it makes it even more critical for all of us to acquire skills to be part of this exciting new world that is coming up uh, in front of us. You've made the first, uh, the right first step by coming here today and learning a little bit about all the different exciting areas of STEM that you may want to study. So I hope you all have a fantastic morning, that you learn something new. Uh, ultimately, of course, I hope that you decide to pursue an education in science, technology, engineering, and math, and that you convince other young women that you know to do the same. So with that, I think we have just a few minutes for questions. Yeah, so happy to take any of your questions. Hi, my name's Sophia. I'm from Assumption College in Brantford. I just wanted to ask you a little bit more about your journey from like where you started up to where you got in Linamar and like some sure. of the obstacles that you faced and how you overcame those. Sure. So uh, I, when I started at Linamar, I started on the shop floor running a machine to just really understand the basics of our business and metal removal and what, what we did and how we did it. So that was great. And then I worked my way around to really every different area of the business. So engineering, quality control, accounting, material control, uh, every aspect of the business, estimating, et cetera. And I found that really invaluable to me, I, uh, certainly ultimately when I took over my first plant to run my first plant, because I'd seen the business from all those different perspectives, and I think that that really helped me kind of understand how it all worked uh, together and, and how to make realistic expectations of people. So I would really encourage that as you, when you, you know, get uh, through your education and into, into the working world to try and get a variety of experiences. Don't, for, don't be uh, worried about taking sort of a lateral move. It's not necessarily a promotion, but it's over here into something new. You may find different areas that you like even more than the area that you started out, and it'll just make you a more well-rounded uh, executive. It was a great experience and I learned a lot, but it was tough because every time I switched jobs, I'd have a whole new group of people who I'd have to convince that I was capable and on the team and I'm gonna work hard and smart and can do all, all can do the work. So it was, it was a little bit tough, uh, like sort of emotionally, I guess, from that perspective. But I think also it just made me stronger and tougher, you know, to go through that, uh, you know, time and again just made me stronger. And now I've got this incredible network of people all through the company that I've worked with in all kinds of different plants and who have landed in all kinds of different places who, you know, are people I can go to who, for advice and who are my advocates in the company as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, well look, it's, uh, it's great to be here. I'm really excited about hearing from uh, the rest of the speakers and the panel. And again, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you.